All right guys, in this video, we are gonna be talking about what classes and objects are and what object-oriented programming in general is. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be opening my Python tutorial for beginners playlist. And I want you guys to bookmark this playlist as I have done here so that you can see your playlist here and you can complete this course as soon as possible. Also, if you are watching it on a mobile phone, you can uh, consider saving this playlist. Now, what are classes and objects? So I'm gonna be starting out by uh, talking about object-oriented programming. So if you Google object oriented programming, it's not a Pythonic term. It's not something related to only Python. It's a programming paradigm and uh, what object oriented programming serves to a programmer is something that we are going to be talking about in this video. So object oriented programming is just a way of programming. It's not a must thing. It just has some own advantages. So I'm not going to be diving deep into what object oriented programming does, what procedural programming does, but I just wanted to point this out that so far what we did was procedural programming. And now what we want to do is we want to get into object oriented programming. The reason most of the packages, most of the code that you see uh, written in Python is written using object oriented programming uh, because it's easy to maintain. Uh, it has several other advantages like you can easily understand the code, the code flow and you can easily reuse the code. So it comes with all these advantages and I don't want you to dive deep into the theory because I don't want you to learn something. I don't want to promote all that. So what I'll do is I'll simply create a Python file. I'll say tutorial 33.py and I just want you to understand what Python classes and objects are. So Python classes and objects are a way to model real world examples. For example, let us say we have some employee and I want to write some code for employee that can tell me what the salary of the employee is and I want to write some code which can tell me, uh, which can give me some way of changing the salaries, the changing of increments that I'm giving that employee every year, all those things. So if I want to write a code that can do that, uh, it's actually easy for me to use object oriented programming if I want to model it as a real world scenario. So anytime you want to model a problem as a real world scenario, you got to be using classes and objects. But now we'll see that how to use classes and option, uh, sorry, classes and objects in action. So simply you just have to write class and just write employee. Now this will not make much sense right now, but just follow me, keep following me and you'll definitely learn what classes and objects are. So I'll give you a very simple example. Let us say you have some employee and you have some employees that you are dealing with in your code base. You have some students that you are dealing with in your code base. Now, let us say we are talking about increasing the salary. If you write a function to increase salary of an employee, it does make sense to do so in case of employees, but it doesn't make sense to do so in case of students because students have no salary. Similarly, if you talk about marks, it doesn't make sense when you talk about marks of an employee. It does make sense to talk about the marks of a student. So we can actually implement and incorporate all these things using classes and we can model our problem as a real world scenario. So what I'll do is I'll simply comment these out. Now you might be thinking how to model a given problem as classes and objects. So I'll give you a very simple analogy and I'll simply write noun and I'll say classes. And then I'll write adjective and I'll say attributes and I'll say verb and I'll say methods. Now this is just an analogy. I just want to give you a warning here. I'll say, uh, this is a disclaimer. This is just an analogy. You don't have to take it literally. So what I want to tell you using this analogy is that whenever you see a noun, for example, employee, student, animal, you can model it as a class. Whenever you see an adjective, you can model it as an attribute. And whenever you see a verb, you can model it as a method. For example, uh, cat walking, animal can walk. So animal dot walk, walk is a method and you can make your animal walk. That is the verb and that can be modeled as a method. So keeping these things into mind, let us write our first class, which is, which I've already written and I've said class employee will give an indent and we'll simply write a method here. So what we'll do is we'll say def and whenever you write def, you have to say self comma and then uh, I'll say 
salary or I'll simply say get salary I'll say get salary and I'll say uh, self and I'll say return uh, self dot salary that's it now you might be thinking what I'm writing but I'll simply tell you what I'm writing so it's saying that instance of employee has no salary so we'll say salary is equal to 34 we'll say name is equal to Harry and now I am actually hard coding the name but this is something that you will not do in the future but simply bear with me and keep uh, watching the video I am I'm simply modeling a very simple class and this will be your first class if you're watching this course so I'll say e1 is equal to I'll say employee okay and I'll say e1 dot salary is equal to I'll simply say 766 let me run this code if I run this code, I'll get nothing because I haven't printed anything. I'll simply say print even dot salary and this should be printing 766 for me because I changed the salary to 766. But if I comment this line out, E1 is equal to employee has actually created an object of employee. Okay, so let me describe this program to you first and then we'll keep printing whatever we want. Okay, so I'll simply say uh, hash and this is creating an object of class employee okay so we have created an object named e1 of class employee now what we are doing here is we are setting the salary of that employee to 766 we can do that the default salary of the employee is 34 as you can see here and the name of the employee is Harry so this is a default name that I've given so if I print this I want you guys to comment below what the program's output is gonna be so i'll simply run this program now for you and it will be 34 because it's very straightforward the default value of salary is 34 so e1 dot salary will be printing 34 for me now what i'll do is i'll simply uncomment this and the uh, output of this program will then become 766 because i have changed the salary of this employee to 766 so instead of saying print e1 dot salary I can even say print even dot get salary now what get salary is doing get salary is actually returning the salary of this employee so I can run get salary function on an object of employee of employee class now if I run this program I'll see the same result so now it's saying employee is not designed uh, defined uh, let me see what the issue is so I'm saying even dot get salary self dot salary Mm, line one module one okay so i think i didn't save this i have actually selected this and ran it I, I need to run it without selecting now if i run this it's telling me 766 and i can keep running it will give me 766 now if i comment this line out i'll see 34 as you can see here so this is a very basic and simple class that we have written in python now you might be thinking what object oriented programming is we haven't talked much about the differences between object oriented programming and procedural oriented programming but i want you guys to sit back relax and keep following me keep following these videos and by the time you know what classes are what uh, classes and methods are what this self is doing and uh, what these attributes are you'll definitely learn why we are using classes and objects but for now if you're not able to answer this question why you're using classes and object i want you to pause for some time pause for a few more videos and in the future we'll see why we are using classes and objects and all the things that we have seen in object oriented part of this course will make sense so i hope you have accessed this playlist guys if you haven't already i want you guys to access this playlist and bookmark it so that it shows up in the bookmark bar and also if you are watching it using a phone you can save this playlist uh, if you haven't already subscribed the channel i want you to subscribe the channel so that you can actually access this course whenever you want and i'll be releasing many many more videos in the future so if you want to get access to those videos you should consider subscribing to this channel so thank you so much guys for watching this video give me a thumbs up and i will see you next time